Hey Saints, welcome back. So today we're going to talk about John 836. Like I mentioned, I think it was in the very last video I did. And so let's look at this. It's very important and it can set you free, uh, if not all at once, to a deeper level than you are right now. If you just look at these words and what they mean and read them in context, okay? So if the sun sets you free, then what? Well, let's read it. It says, so if the sun sets you free, you will be free indeed. So let's look at sun first. So who is the sun? Speaking about the son of God, Jesus Christ. All right. So let's come to this other stuff later in a minute. So if the sun sets you free, let's look at that word free. What does this mean? This free means to make free, to set free, to make exempt from liability. Now, what is that referring to? If you think about the spirit realm and all the things we've talked about and seen in all the other videos, one major theme that we've seen, it would mean that the exemption from liability would be exemption from liability under the law. Do you remember how the scripture says that, uh, and I think it's in 2 uh, Corinthians where it says, the Lord is not counting your sins against you? Well, that's what this is. This is saying that you are exempt from liability under the law. So all of the infractions or trespasses that you have made under that law, which is now passing away, you are exempt from. How can you be exempt from breaking the law? Well, you're exempt from breaking the law because there's a higher law above that that says that if you owe a debt, that someone can stand in your place and pay that debt for you. But not many people will do that, right? But in this case, we had a debt that was so high and that was so mammoth that we could never ever pay it if we had labored 24 hours a day from the time we were born till the time we died, we wouldn't even touch a percent of it. It, it wouldn't even matter if we worked that hard. So we had a debt we couldn't pay and so Jesus Christ stepped in and said, wait, I'm going to pay the debt because I want them back. So he paid the debt and that law is imposed in this situation. Our debt where we were not exempt from liability under the law, Jesus Christ has lived the life uh, under the law perfectly for us and we get imputed that perfect life to us. So I have lived perfectly under the law just as Jesus has. You have lived perfectly under the law just as Jesus has. This is in the spirit. This is what God has done for us. Okay, so this, if the sun sets you free, it means to make free or set free and it means that you are exempt from liability under the law. Basically, you can do no wrong. So what it's telling us is that when we have a fault, when we have a character flaw, if we sin, if we have a struggle, it is not counted against us. It's counted in our sanctification as a good thing in our sanctification. It's not counted against us. It's counted for us because God's turning everything for the good. Okay, so do you get that? Well, it's important that you do. That's why I'm harping on it. So if the sun sets you free, you will be, this is a promise, a guarantee, free indeed. What does this free mean? This free means you are not a slave. If you're a slave, you're not free. You're not free to do what you want. You're not free to say what you want, right? So this free means you're not a slave. It also means you are not under restraint. The slavery restrains you. It holds you captive. It, it is something that keeps you from being free. 
So that's what this free means, that you are not a slave, that you are not under restraint. You are free. You know how where the Holy Spirit is, there's freedom? Well, it's total freedom. Total freedom. You can twirl around in a white dress in a meadow and just run around. And that's how free you are. So these two words free here are very important. And so we see that if the sun sets you free, makes you free, and makes you exempt from sinning, he's taken your sin away. He's made you exempt from being liable under the law because he's imputed his perfect righteousness to you. If the sun sets you free that way, wow, then you will be free indeed. You'll be truly not a slave to sin, not a slave to the law, not a slave to other people, not a slave to the devil, and you will not be under restraint. You will not be held down by anything because he has broken the chains. He's set you free from your prison. He's broken the bondage. Now let's go back and see how this can happen. How can the sun set you free and cause you to be this free? Why? Because only Jesus Christ can set you free. Only Jesus Christ can make you exempt. Only Jesus Christ says and has declared in his word conclusively that you're not a slave anymore. Only Jesus Christ says in his word conclusively, definitively, he says you are not under restraint anymore. Well, guess what? He has set you free. Check. He has made you exempt from liability under the law exempt from liability for sinning, exempt from liability for any thing that you don't like about yourself, you're exempt from punishment. You're exempt from condemnation. You're exempt from judgment. You're exempt from punishment, from, from anything like that. You are exempt. He will train you and discipline you and conform you to his image. That's separate. Okay, so he, he has set you free. Not only can he, but he has. Not only can he make you exempt, but his word tells you that you are already exempt from all the things we just mentioned, sin, the law, and all of that. Not only does he say you're not a slave anymore, but you really are not a slave anymore in the spirit according to what he has done for you. And not only does he say you're not under restraint anymore, you really are not under restraint. And so it's only the lies that we believe that keep us restrained in this dimension. Because in the Spirit, he says that he has set us free. So a good a question or prayer could be, Lord, show me where in your word you say that I've been set free, but in my life, I'm not in agreement with that. And show me the lies, which are the chains that are keeping me bound. What are those lies? And when he shows you the lies, you can lift it up to him and have him replace it with the truth. Some kind of a truth that can set you free. Okay, so let's look at Romans 6.14. It says, for sin shall no longer be your master because you are no longer under law but under grace. So these verses are underlining and supporting these, mainly these two free words and meanings here, this and this, okay? And he's the one that has caused it all to happen. So he gets all the glory. So let's look at the um, this. Sin shall no longer be your master because you're not under law, but under grace. So this verse is letting us know that if sin is your master, if it is, then you're under the law. And that's how you can know if you're under law or grace. Because if sin is ruling your life, if sin is bullying you, if sin is controlling you, if sin is active in your life, you are under the law. You may not mean to be. It may be subconsciously you're under the law. But you are. If you keep sinning, you're under the law. So the Lord wants you to move into his grace where your sins are not counted against you. And if he's not counting sins against you, then you don't need to be counting your sins against you. And in that, you can line up with the Lord and you will experience freedom.
And also, if sin is no longer your master, then who is your master? Who is your master when you move from law to grace? Your master was the law, and it kept you sinning. But who's your master now when you're under the grace of God? Jesus Christ. That proves that he is truly your Lord if you live under his grace. Nobody else gives grace but him. See, so you are in alignment with him and you are verifying that you belong to him when you live and move and have your being in his grace because he is the grace of God. That's another point. Romans 7, 6. But now, by dying to what once bound us, we have been released from the law so that we serve in the new way of the Spirit. Okay, let's look at this one. It says, but now, by dying to what once bound us. What is this saying? This is saying, by dying or putting away or separating yourself from or divorcing yourself from what once bound us, what used to bind us and restrain us and cause us to sin was the law. And so this verse is saying, when you die to the law, then you, past tense, have been released, set free from the law. See, the law is what binds you. So why would he set you free from the law and what once had you bound? So that we serve in the new way of the Spirit. This is life in this Holy Spirit with Jesus Christ as your Lord. This proves that Jesus Christ is your Lord. If you are serving in the new way, not the old way, the new covenant way of the Holy Spirit. The old covenant way was of the law. The new covenant way is of the Spirit. Everything in the new covenant is all about the Holy Spirit. So, by dying to what once bound us, we have been released from the law so that we can live and move and have our being in Christ. That's really what it's saying. We can serve in the new way, the new covenant, by the Holy Spirit. And then, two more. I did a video on this called No Law, No Sin. And so... It says, apart from the law, sin is dead. Apart from the law, sin is dead. So, this verse is telling us that wherever the law is, there will be sin. You can guarantee it. It will happen every time. And conversely, where there is no law, where you are apart from the law, where you separate yourself from the law, where you divorce yourself from the law, apart from the law, when your heart and your life is apart from the law, sin will be dead in your life. This is what the scripture is telling us. So, the question would be, Lord, where in my life am I living under the law? Let's search around in my heart and find the places that are living under the law. Show me which relationships I'm in where I'm subconsciously putting myself or that other person under the law and I want to accuse them all the time or they're accusing me. All that accusation and condemnation means that you're living under the law. And you, a lot of forgiveness may need to take place. You may need to forgive yourself at multiple levels, other people, multiple levels, especially if you've lived with them for a long time. Oh boy, yes. So apart from the law, sin is dead. In other words, where there's no law, there's no sin. Why? Because one of the main purposes of the law is to define sin and point it out in you and to arouse it in you. That's what the law does. So if you want a lot of sin in your life, hang out under the law, with the law above your head, with the law in your heart, and sin will be everywhere. So if you want a life of sin, do that. If you're sick of sin and you're ready to do something new and you're ready to enter both feet into the new covenant, put away the law. 
It's binding you, and the Lord wants to release you from it so that you can serve in the new way of the Spirit. Put it away, and sin will be dead in your life. It's very simple, okay? It may feel wrong. That's okay. Let your feelings have a tantrum or do whatever they want, but obey the Scripture. Make the law apart from you, and over time you will see that sin will become dead in your life progressively over time. Romans 8, 2, last one, is through Christ, the law of the spirit of life has set you free from the law of sin and death. So here we see that this verse is telling us that the law of sin and death was binding us, restraining us, holding us captive. How do I know that? Because it says the spirit of life has set you free from that. So if you're set free from something, then it was binding you, restraining you, holding you captive. You were arrested and you couldn't, couldn't get away. You were in jail. You were tied up with chains. So this is not through human effort. It's not through anything we do. It is through the living, risen Jesus Christ right here. Through Christ and only Christ. No one else in the entire world can make this happen. You can't do it. I can't do it. The pastor, the president, the pope can't do it. No one can do it. Jesus Christ can. And that's what he does all day long. So I'm encouraging you to get in alignment with him. Listen to his Holy Spirit. If you're not hearing him, say, Lord, what is blocking me from hearing your Holy Spirit? I want to hear it. Sometimes things can block us or distract us lies mostly, um, different things. But anyway, he'll show you that. So through Christ and only Christ, the new, this could say the new law of the spirit, like it says up here, serving the new way of the spirit. Through Christ, the new law of the Holy Spirit of life has set you free from the law of sin and death. So when you are born again, you are raised from the dead in the resurrection that was Christ. And that is the spirit of life that raised him from the dead. He is the spirit of life. He's one with the spirit of life. So the spirit of life rose from the dead and raised him from the dead. And that spirit that lives inside you, that Holy Spirit, has past tense, has already set you free from the law of sin and death. Do you see the difference here? Life versus death. Life versus death. Life goes with Christ. Life goes with the spirit of, of life. Life goes with newness. Death and sin go with the law. Death and sin go with the law of sin and death. So with Christ, you get life. With the Holy Spirit, you get life. With Christ, you get newness. With the Holy Spirit, you get newness. With the law, you get sin, guilt, condemnation, and then death. So which one do you want? The law, which brings sin, guilt, condemnation, and death. Or B, do you want new life with the life of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit flowing through you? It's a rhetorical question. Of course you want life. So this is just to look at this verse again and to kind of dig down a little bit more, a little bit deeper. And we may do another one on this. But uh, I just hope that's helpful. I wanted you to see these things that are right there in the scriptures. Um, they're just right there. And we just have to kind of dig around and we can find them and learn more about what God has done for us. Because the truth is that if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. That is the promise and that is the bottom line. Okay, so I pray that you will get to know the Son at a deeper level and let him set you free so that you will be free indeed. And that's my prayer for you. I'll see you again soon.